Adventure looks different to everyone. For some, it might be as simple as a camping trip, or it could mean a journey around the world. Amelia Earhart simply stated that adventure is worthwhile within itself. I can get behind that, sure. But you honestly can't really define adventure for yourself until you've wrestled with it, until it's beat you down and then picked you back up again. I believe that true adventure exists beyond what you might think is safe or obtainable. That's where you see miracles happen, where you get smacked by the harsh reality of the present. Yvonne Chouinard is famous for saying, it's not adventure until something goes wrong. Without mistakes or conflict or breakdowns, your story will simply be boring. I believe that adventure is the distance between the present and your fulfillment of your dreams. How you navigate the in-between is the great unknown. Our adventure started over two years ago when four guys decided to pursue our passion for overlanding and exploring the world by vehicle. Ryan Erickson, Jeff Downer, Scott Cahill, and myself all decided to take a big step and leave the mundane to obtain the lifestyle of vehicle-based adventure travel. Just this year, my grandpa died and uh, he was an inspiration to me in my life. When he was 28 years old, he took 800 head of cows from Texas and brought them to Montana and started his own cattle ranch. And uh, as I looked at myself, I'm 28 years old and it's time to do something that I'm passionate about. The past three years of my life, I've been in survival mode. With recovering from a serious accident and supporting my friends and family through cancer, I haven't had any adventure and I need adventure. I just love being outside and I love seeing places that I've never seen before. The more that I uh, go adventurous places and do adventurous things, it gives me more courage to do things that I might be afraid of. This is a risk for me. I'm stepping out into the unknown. I need a change in my life, and this is my opportunity. It's important that we test these vehicles before we get to the Yukon. We need to know what vehicles are capable of and what we're capable of. Oh, yes! <laughs> that was sweet. I was, so sweet. I was afraid I was going to run you over, but other than that, it was, it was great. <laughs> yeah, I was a little worried about that too. <laughs> this is not your typical road trip. We're not using RVs. We're using sophisticated four-wheel drive vehicles. We're going to extremely remote areas and living 100% self-sustained out of our vehicles. We learned a lot from that first trip to Moab, Utah. We had to acknowledge that we were total rookies. So we set off on a series of mini adventures to stretch ourselves and to reveal our strengths and weaknesses as a team. The Boulder River drainage south of Big Timber in our home base of Montana was the first of five notable trips. It was the same trip where I cut my teeth into adventure as a kid. We picked up a new member, Jeff Gazy to round out the team. <laughs> Ryan was still fresh into the world of enduro motorcycles and took some hard knock lessons along the way. Hey, Ryan, you forgot something. This is a dream come true. Salt of the earth guys, and they're, they're the only guys I'd ever want to be out here with. And got a great team, and I can't wait for the next trip. I'm already thinking about the next trip. That winter, we ventured into the heart of British Columbia where a winter storm punished us with constant snowfall and wet conditions. 
pushing our equipment to the edge. Our teamwork was tested for the first time when we had vehicle damage and fuel range limitations. This just got serious fast. <laughs> yeah. If we can't get these two, three miles right here, we don't have enough fuel to get back the way we came. This is so insane. We that was it. the most insane driving I've done in years. That's why you're out here is to step into the unknown, right? Yeah. So, the unknown's gonna happen. Yeah. How do you deal with it? That spring, we returned to the enchanted land of Moab, Utah. It was an effort to see hard miles and test the vehicle's technical abilities even further. Jeff Gazy took it all in for the first time and loved every minute of it. In Lockhart Basin, our navigation was put to the test along with our driving abilities. The vehicles performed flawlessly. One evening, camped in the Valley of the Gods, we had the opportunity to hear Jeff Downer's story. It's like, this is, really, this is it? This is how I'm gonna go, <laughs> you know? And I seriously <clears throat> thought that he was, he was just gonna back right over me. Next was Wyoming, where we took on the Morrison Jeep Trail. A trail that would take our technical skills and grit to the limit. Zach Collins and Ty Heaps, both dear friends of mine, joined the team for the first time. This very drainage was used by Chief Joseph when he took 700 Nez Perce Indians on a historic 1400 mile retreat, evading the US Army and its 2000 soldiers for over four months. This is intense. It took over 13 hours just to cover the two miles to the top. It was one of our finest victories. Our final excursion took us to Idaho, the land of so much more than potatoes. We explored the town of Mackey and met with the town mayor. Mayor Lowell was a passionate man who earns just $75 a month to run the town. We learned a valuable lesson there, that the people you encounter and the places they live in can have a significant impact on you. And the people you choose to explore with can have an equal impact on the places you choose to see. We hit the Craters of the Moon National Monument at the perfect time of evening. One beautiful, rugged place. You go from like sagebrush to rock, the blackness. Eventually, we found ourselves in the St. Anthony Sand Dunes, a feature created by the craters of the moon's erosion. We were like kids on a playground. There we blew our first tire while running at very low pressures. Performing the field repair built up our confidence that we can fix what we break. Ryan caught his first fish ever on a fly rod and it. lost a bet. Yeah, disgusting. In the final hour of our trip, Ryan presented us with awesome news. My wife's having a baby. Come on! Come on. <laughs> we celebrated the end of our final training trip and Ryan's new adventure into fatherhood with a cigar. We then pulled out the map of our dream location, Alaska and the Yukon. Preparations began right away. First, we planned our route at a remote Montana cabin. The main team would be a returning member, Scott Cahill, Jeff Downer, and myself. A new member, Toby Johnston, would join the team in June as a third cameraman. My wife, Rochelle, and Scott's wife, Rhonda, would be joining us for the first part of the trip. Then, Ryan and Ty would come in later for the Yukon portion. Through the winter, we built up our vehicles. The 100 series Land Cruiser needed a few additional accessories to optimize it for our long trip. Much needed air lockers and lower gears were installed as well as a dual battery monitoring system. 
Jeff installed ARB slider rails and front fender bars for added protection. The big project was our prized 2013 Toyota Tacoma. Starting from scratch, we optimized it for overland travel by beefing up its suspension from Icon Vehicle Dynamics. We added beefier Deaver Springs to hold the coming expedition weights. We also re-geared the differentials to a lower 456 gear ratio provided by Nitro Gear and Axle. Next we added front and rear protection to the vehicle. An ARB front bumper with Warren winch and ultralight master pull synthetic line. A Kmar rear bar. and a safari snorkel. A test drive was in order. Then a new ARE CX topper, ARB drawers in both rigs for ease of organization, and finally, a custom set of fabricated rock sliders and fender rails for the Tacoma, made by Dark Horse Customs. Next, it was off to get the Tacoma wrapped and have this year's Alaska Expedition graphics placed. Most notable, the big X on the side in reference to the nickname we gave the Alaska Yukon Expedition two years ago is simply Trip X. With the initial build of the vehicles completed, the team headed down to the Overland Expo in Flagstaff, Arizona. The Overland Expo, held once a year, is the largest gathering of overlanders in the world. People come from all over to learn and get training for their travels, wherever they may take them. While there, Baja Rack supplied our roof racks just in time for equipped expedition outfitters to install our Easy On rooftop tent. Rhonda received some personal driving instruction in the Overland Journal's special project, Land Rover LR4. Control turned on. When we come down the big hills, the computer will do the braking for you. First gear, low range, under two miles per hour. You have it in mud and ruts, and for the type of terrain we're in right here, mud and ruts is the perfect choice. Not all tools are physical when it comes to overlanding. After our return, we took a wilderness first aid course. Medical training is very much a tool and a necessity. Final preps on the vehicles took place. Rigid lights, radios, dual batteries, and refrigerators all were last to be installed. Then our newly designed X-Venture trailer arrived from Shut Industries. It has tons of cargo space and a cargo rack for our Globetrotter rooftop tent and ARB awnings. It's also equipped with onboard power supply. That is sweet. Yeah. The X-Venture would be our pseudo production trailer. It is now one of our primary assets for the trip. Last minute crunch time. We're right now, we're 10 days out and it feels like it's tomorrow and we have all this stuff to do yet. So it's stressful right now. So we're headed over to Inner West Tire here in Bozeman. The very last mechanical thing we have to do to the vehicles, put our new general tires on. So uh, got some new shoes for the trucks and they're gonna be the tires that are gonna get us through Alaska and the Yukon. So we're gonna go pick up the other rig and get tires put on it. And we're getting pretty squared away. Yeah. Test time. Just learn from their mistakes. So you How do you feel? Good. good. Sometimes it's really good. Own, I gotta get off work early today and go on a little or test trip, test everything we put on these things. Make sure that we are expedition ready. Why aren't you coming today? Okay, so I'm not going on the test run today because my back's been bothering me for a while. Tell them about the shingles. Uh, I don't want to talk about the shingles. <laughs> <laughs> I got shingles. <laughs> that, that looks incredibly good compared to what it was. Um, thankfully, thankfully, I'm not really hairy there either, so that's good. Hey, rolling? I don't know. Camera speeds. Totally crappy day. 
which is perfect for running. This is going to be Alaska weather to the T. So train like you fight, fight like you train. Let's go get wet. So today is a, a pretty big day because we finally have got the vehicles to a position that we can do a full run. And uh, a full run as if we are shooting a show like we're doing right now. Um, and testing all of the systems involved with making that happen. So from the, the lifestyle, which we call the expedition side, uh, and then we have the production side. So we need to make sure that expedition equipment is functioning properly as well as our production side running properly as well. We headed up to the Cahills to have our first group meeting. Today's objective, everybody, is to run through all of our systems as much as we can to the best of our abilities within the time frame that we have generators, cameras, multiple camera mounts, um, uh, opening up a tent, putting a tent away, cooking. Be very extra anal on our vehicles today, hearing sounds, hearing noises, really paying attention to what you're hearing so we can make changes or we know at least what's normal and what isn't. All right, I'm <laughs> Up in here. <laughs> All right, ready to roll. Was a part of packing up our kitchen, and I don't think we have any pans at the moment. And I have planned to sear some salmon and some plums for a salad that I made up. And I'm trying to think of a creative solution. I'm going to be able to cook our fish and our fruit for our salad before we actually make it out into the so we middle have, of nowhere. We have no pans. None? And Clay clarified that? So we, we have no pans at all? We have foil? Okay, so I thought you were saying pan. Pam is in like non-stick spray. <laughs> you have pans as in cooking metal pots. Chris is subverted. Okay, my blood pressure just went back to normal. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I need to hurry down. Sticky thingy. <laughs> what we're about to do is air down for the first time. Uh, the reason we air down is a few reasons. It increases the uh, dampening ability. It rides better. Uh, it's better for this rough road to actually absorb impacts and vibrations. That's good for our camera equipment and our hard drives that are on board, and for us, our bottoms. Um, it also increases our traction and just overall life quality on these hard roads. And now you're gonna feel that shredder valve and it, it clicks in like a fork. I'm a pro now. I don't even know if that doesn't, it doesn't, see? Our first lessons completed with the tires, we dove into camp. Shelby, you would like to ask if you could test that GoPro in the back of the cruiser. Copy. Our good friend Ross, a Hollywood Ouch. crane and dolly grip, had come from Los Angeles to help us with our production side. You have him to thank for the idea of this camera angle. All right, let's hold at 35. Roger, 35. We turn the lights on just for, uh, you know, make it a little more visually interesting. Hey, Toby, you might want to warm up that trash bag so we can bag it and wrap it. Scott leaned out to work on a camera on the roof and uh, rolled his window down, leaned out, and now the window won't roll up and we're about to get nuked by a storm. You know, it's gonna rain soon. <laughs> well, as soon as you put the windows down and the motor fails, doesn't it always rain? <laughs> this yeah, stuff right here makes me really happy. I really like this motor, stuff. This motor is just the down, best. So. It's our favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite. Ross is so cute, you just can't want to put him in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> just put him in our toolbox. Hey guys, just pop them out whenever we need them. That's all I gotta say. You what? You are handier than pockets in your <laughs> The rain had put a hurt on us, but production lessons were learned. All clear. 
clear back here. All right. Okay, we're gonna roll uh, about 15 miles to the north here, or excuse me, to the south. Where's your door panel? I broke it. It's in the ditch. We threw it away. So I don't want it anymore. I counted on that one. It was three miles. Food was the next item on the list. So we set up on the Boulder River to test our kitchen kit. Scott is not always talkative, but he is always up to something, particularly sneaking food. The girls were seemingly satisfied with the workings of the galley, and the food was delicious. You're gonna take a shower? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna take a shower. <laughs> Are you ready? It's the little things. It's the little things in life. I can do Alaska with hot water. Okay, so this is our this is our battery indicators here, and our second our secondary battery, our uh, our auxiliary battery has been nuked. Um, so we have a warning system in the back that also beeps at us and tells us when we know. And that's how I knew I was over there dealing with dishes and stuff. And otherwise, we would have had a dead battery. And now I'm going to be able to start it. We're gonna let our main battery charge our auxiliary battery, and that's gonna keep us out of trouble. This guy's reading our, our main battery here, and this one's reading our auxiliary, and now this will start charging itself, and it'll keep going all the way up until, until it's charged. The test day had been very successful. Despite a few technical errors and a window failure, the mock run revealed that we had only one thing left to do. It was finally time to step out into the adventure of our lives and apply all the lessons we have learned along the way venture into the great unknown. All we have left to do is go.